See, sickle cell anemia is a genetic disease. It occurs due to gene mutation. Persons suffering from this disease possess red blood corpuscles, sickle shaped, instead of normal biconcave round structures. Their red blood corpuscles will be much elongated, and in gross structure, they look similar to sickle. In this diagram, you can see both type of uh, RBC that is normal as well as sickle shaped. See the normal RBC are biconcave round structures, whereas sickle shaped cells are much elongated. We can understand the genetics of this disease because it is a disease that occurs due to mutation in a specific gene. Actually, that gene is situated on chromosome 11. There is a specific locus on this chromosome 11, which encodes for beta globin protein. So this beta globin gene that is normally indicated as HBA, HBA is normal allele, but the mutated form of this gene is referred as HBS. Yes stands for sickle cell anemia. Generally in the population, heterozygous people could be there. They are normal persons. So such people will have one normal allele, HBA, and another one, the mutated one, HBS. And if a male person marries with a woman uh, with same genotype, so if two heterozygotes marry with each other, then in next generation, they will have probability of having all the three situations. That is, their 25% of children will be homozygous normal. They will have genotype HBA, HBA. Their RBC will be looking perfectly normal in shape. And 50% of the children will have chance to be heterozygous. So they will be HBA, HBS. And remaining 25% of the children will be suffering from sickle cell anemia. Their genetic makeup will be HBS, HBS. So you can have heterozygotes in the population. Such heterozygotes will have both type of cells in their uh, blood. That is their RBC will be normal as well as sickle shaped. You can say 50% of the RBC will be normal and 50% of them will be sickle shaped. So it is a condition we can call as co-dominance where both phenotypes are in expression. HBA that actually forms the normal RBC and HBS forms the sickle shaped one. So it is a heterozygous condition in which both type of uh, uh, red blood corpuscles could be seen. And those who suffer from sickle cell anemia, they will have only sickle shaped RBC. Now we can understand exactly how uh, this uh, disease happens. So for that we can see the uh, DNA uh, at DNA level, what happens in a normal person? If you see that is specific strand from which the messenger RNA is synthesized, so this one is actually template DNA molecule represented from 3' prime to 5' prime end. And suppose at its specific uh, uh, place, there are three nucleotides, which are CTC. Okay, so normally CTC will be there in the DNA. And uh, when this DNA will be transcribed into messenger RNA, this messenger RNA is shown from 5 prime to 3 prime end. Now this CTC will be uh, transcribed in the form of GAG. Okay, these three complementary bases will be coming over there. And in the polypeptide chain of beta globin protein, the amino acid which will be recognized by this codon GAG will be glutamate. So this is actually glutamate. In normal hemoglobin, exactly at sixth position, glutamate is there. Okay, it is glutamic acid to which I am saying glutamate. If you see from amino end to carboxylic end, exactly at sixth position in normal condition, glutamate is there. But uh, those who have mutation in this gene, in their case, instead of CTC, the nucleotides will be CAC. You can say that T nucleotide 
is replaced in the form of A. That is, a pyrimidine 1 is replaced by a purine base. It is a kind of transversal. And because of this CAC, the messenger RNA will have codon G U G. So instead of G A G, it is having G U G. Now this G U G encodes for amino acid valine. So at sixth position, glutamate will not be there. It will be valine over there. And just because of this single amino acid substitution, we find that uh, this particular disease happens. So in beta chain of globin, total 146 amino acids are there. Only change will be there at the sixth position instead of glutamate in mutation, uh, in mutated condition it will be valine. And this replacement causes such a severe disease in the individual. See what exactly happens. This one is a normal RBC, round biconcave RBC. What we find that hemoglobin will be there inside it. Actually, two alpha and two beta globin proteins will be there. And they are arranged in such a manner that the RBC will be gaining normal shape. But when such kind of substitution is there, like glutamate being replaced by valine, in such situation, the uh, globin protein, beta globin protein, will actually undergo polymerization in case the RBC is not getting ample amount of oxygen. So in the absence of oxygen, there will be polymerization of globin protein, particularly beta globin protein. And as a result of that, the shape of RBC will get distorted. So what is shown in this diagram, in case of normal hemoglobin protein, the uh, globins are arranged in proper manner. Whereas in case of mutant hemoglobin protein, there will be polymerization of it and that will actually distort the shape of RBC. So sickle cell hemoglobin gets polymerized during lack of oxygen. And uh, in this particular disease, so many organs get affected, kidneys, liver, brain, spleen, all these organs get uh, affected. You know, these are the structures, uh, particularly uh, blood supply to such structures will be hampered uh, due to presence of abnormal kind of RBC. And those who suffer from homozygosity of this sickle cell anemia, they are real sufferer. They may not survive up to their uh, reproductive age. They die in early stage of their life because of several uh, kind of ailments, severe ailments in them. They will have to die in early age. 